This really was an historic, flawlessly run campaign. Was it? <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. Well, the fine folks over at MSNBC were in utter disbelief that the Democratic candidate Kamala Harris lost the presidential election last night because according to them, her campaign was flawless. Anna Kasparian from the Young Turks is calling out Joy Reid from MSNBC for her over the top praise of Kamala Harris's flawless campaign, even though Harris lost to Donald Trump. Kasparian thinks Reid's defense is just too much and even throws in some racially charged and out of touch comments. It's a clash of opinions in the progressive world, and Anna Kasparian isn't having it. Let's dive in and check this out together. Now, here's. <laughs> when propaganda goes wrong. Now, here is Joy Reid making the case. She's making the case. She's going to bolster the argument that Kamala Harris had a perfect campaign. Let's watch. And I think it's important to say that, you know, anyone who has experienced or been in the United States for any period of time and experienced this country's history and knows it cannot have believed that it would be easy to elect a woman president, let alone a woman of color. Mm -hmm. Let's just be clear. Mm -hmm. And nothing that was true yesterday about how flawlessly this campaign was run is not true now. Mm -hmm. I mean, this really was an historic flawlessly run campaign. She had, Queen Latifah never endorses anyone. She came out and endorsed, <laughs> you know, I mean, we, she had every prominent celebrity voice. She had the, she had the, uh, the Taylor Swift, she had the Swifties, she had the Beehive. Like, you could not have run a better campaign in that short period of time. And I think that's still true. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, but like, Jenk. Queen Latifah. Oh, oh my God, she got Queen Latifah? Queen Latifah. Okay, thank God we're gonna be in the White House. I wonder who her cabinet is gonna be because she ran a flawless campaign. She said, you couldn't have done it any better. She lost. You don't think you could run a campaign any better than losing? She was- <laughs> That's um... amazing, she lost the popular vote. Okay, <laughs> Jesus Christ, what kind of alternate reality do they live in? Kamala Harris ran on the message of saving democracy as she was campaigning alongside a neoconservative like Liz Cheney, who ran interference, provided cover for the Bush administration, which violated our constitutional rights and suspended habeas corpus. If you're into this kind of content, don't forget to like and subscribe. And drop a comment below to let me know what you think about this whole situation. All right. Let's continue. Something to keep in mind. But she was a perfect candidate, Jenk. Perfect you know, candidate. It's just that she was a black woman. And no country would ever elect a black woman, or the United States, of course, because we're just inherently a racist, terrible country, of course. And um, we would never elect someone named uh, Barack Hussein Obama, who's also black, uh, except we did twice. So and he polled at 83% popularity after his first victory. So this in, apparently, in, this country that is so racist that they would never elect, elect a black woman had a black president at 83% approval. Exactly. Okay, but no, it's not the fault of your beloved Democratic politicians. Never that. Guys, I, I just look, this is something that I like to do time to time just to make sure that I'm not going crazy. Because if you look at Obama's campaign speeches, you can juxtapose campaign Obama to President Obama because. When he was in campaign mode, he got it. Like he understood what kind of messaging resonated with Americans, okay? He ran, I would argue, I wouldn't say flawless, nothing is flawless, right? But as close to flawless of a campaign, especially in 2008, as you could possibly run. And it's because he had a message that resonated to resonated with the frustrations of the American people, right? The economic instability, uh, we were in the financial collapse of 2008 at the time, the frustration over the wars abroad. I mean, campaign Obama was incredible, so incredible that it didn't matter what his name was, it didn't matter what his skin color was. What mattered was the substance of what he was saying. We didn't know what Kamala Harris really stood for. We didn't, let's be real about that. And so that was a problem to say that she ran a perfect campaign and then point to Queen Latifah endorsing her as evidence of a flawless campaign is delusional. All right, so here's what Anna Kasparian is getting at. She's saying Kamala Harris tried to sell herself as the candidate to save democracy while teaming up with someone like Liz Cheney, a hardcore neocon 
who backed the Bush administration, which didn't exactly have the best track record on protecting rights. So Anna's pointing out the irony here. In a country that some say is too racist to elect a black woman, we actually had a black president, Barack Obama, who at one point had an 83% approval rating. Aina's basically saying, look, it's not like the American public just won't elect a black leader. They will if the message is right. She compares Kamala's campaign to Obama's in 2008, where he absolutely nailed it. Campaign Obama connected with people, understood their frustrations, whether it was the economic crash or endless wars. It wasn't about his name or skin color. It was about what he stood for and the substance of his message. But with Kamala, Anna argues, people didn't really know what she stood for, saying she ran a flawless campaign and pointing to endorsements from people like Queen Latifah isn't exactly proof. Aina's calling it out as delusional and saying Kamala did have the kind of clear, strong message that Obama had. So in Anna's view, it's more about the substance of the campaign than anything else.